Uh, welcome everybody back to the channel. There will be a couple schools of thought here uh, in reaction to this video. One will come to, from the Bulls, and they will say that uh, right on, Ryan, you're the man. Um, keep on, keep on, keep on, keeping on with the message. And the Bears will come over the top and say, Ryan, you're too optimistic. Ryan, you're sugarcoating what's going on here in the current environment with Hylion. In response to both parties, um, I think a, both parties need to chill out and drive back their perspective on what this is. My life goes on day to day. I've been very, very busy looking at the landscape since the two, uh, the quarter two call. I thought it prudent to provide my reaction to the Q2 call and lend a little bit of perspective on highly on holdings as a whole, uh, some of the topics that have been floating through the social media landscape and reaction to the uh, latest downgrade from Goldman Sachs and and what that could potentially mean, if it means anything. Uh, talk about the current value of the company and whether or not the CEO, Thomas Healy, should step down from the company. I'm going to address all of these and then some, and hopefully by the end of this video, you have a little bit more peace of mind about what it means through the opportunity to own stock, um, what Hylion has done since coming to public markets through the SPAC process, what was to be expected from the company, and what we are expecting going forward from the company. All of these things we're going to talk about and then some in this devoted reaction to the Q2 earnings call that was just uh, summed up at the beginning of this month here in August. The Q2 call I will start with. Um, my reaction was as predicted. Uh, very low expectations, muted to neut uh, neutral to negative on the reaction and highly undelivered on that front. Very, very simple. They estimated... Uh, earnings to come in at about, um, you, you know, significantly more than what they did, um, close to 450,000. They did about just a little less than half that or a little more than half that. <clears throat> and my reaction to that, where a lot of people are talking about the percentage of uh, top line revenue reduction is muted as far as I'm concerned. Um, their ability to generate revenues now based on hybrid earnings uh, is irrelevant to me. Truly. Um, the merit that I gather and garner from their current customers, everyone that is um, earned through hybrid sales now is a net positive for the company. But as far as the bottom dollar and showing a quarter over quarter sequ sequential drop um, means absolutely nothing to me. And here's why. In the face of what has been a, a, a horrendous time period for not only Hylion, but the grander um, EV space and the even grander stock market, I think the start of this decade has been absolutely horrible. Uh, overshadowed by a beginning of 2023 that would have investors believing that somehow we're going to have a soft landing or no recession at all. I'm not in that camp anymore, um, where uh, we're quick to jump off of the recession bandwagon. Uh, we will be quick to jump back on the recession bandwagon here shortly as the wishy-washy commentator that comes through the social media is qu quite frankly only aimed, if not uh, aimed directly at just providing propaganda. You can interpret it however you will, but I don't see headlines in all of the negative commentary that at the bottom suggests that they're 100% certain that you should just sell stock right now and dive headfirst into your prepper bunker. I've never seen anything like that. A lot of negative commentary coming off of two negative weeks here, but in the face of what this young company is trying to do, um, you can look at it one way or the other. And like I said, I'm in a tough position where I get scrutiny from the bulls and the bears on this company when all I'm trying to do is offer a commentary on the company. No more, no less. I enjoy covering the company. Um, where it is socially acceptable for me to own now AT&T for over a half a decade only to see the stock down 23% and 
uh, accumulating more debt over that time frame. Yes, paying me a nice systemic dividend so I can increase my shares in that shitty company. See, that's socially acceptable. But when you take a speculative position in a company like Hylion, um, we often look at it with a different lens in that our expectation of Hylion is that they do X, Y, and Z um, within a finite time period. Now, to Hylion's discredit, um, offering the original investor presentations with those projections um, don't sit well with a lot of investors. I am one of them, okay? But there is a difference between looking at it diplomatically and looking at it with emotion. If it is your thesis enough to look at that information, uh, look at the current management, look at their inability to drive sales, I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, whether or not you think that the future potential is somehow affected by those past projections, sell the stock. Don't own the stock. Um, I think there's very few people out there that probably hold what I consider to be the um, necessary tolerance to even engage in this level of investing anyway. For those people out there that truly do, do understand the perspective here, they will glean um, not a wishy-washy back and forth approach from me, rather a uh, tried and true steadfast message um, that looks to shed light on a company that is bringing products to bear that I think is going to make a difference. Now, if your perspective is that Hylion's product is going to fall dead on arrival, that's your opinion. If you're of the opinion that these last two certifications that Hylion has that are pending will fail to be achieved, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, those would be devastating for the company who has worked so hard to bring what I feel like is a monumental product uh, to a marketplace that desperately needs that product. Now, if I made that statement open-ended and we did not have uh, the incentive uh, credits is one thing, but the looming mandates is significantly more impactful or potentially impactful on both the OEMs and the fleets alike where the government is putting an end cap on just a company like EV, like Hylion in the EV space, coming to bear with what we can kind of all agree is a good product, at least in the bullish community. The bearish perspective on it is such to say that the product, for whatever reason, is a is a bad product. I, I, I don't share in that sentiment at all. But if the story were to be, look, we've got this beautiful product and we had an open-ended market that really did not have a, a sentiment change looming and a potential for a paradigm shift. Now, if Hylion fails to leverage an eventual paradigm shift in the industry and or the paradigm shift never happens, in other words, a, a real acknowledgement to the importance of, of, of shifting to an electrified future. Hylion uh, CEO Thomas Healy has been steadfast in communicating with share owners that the industry is hungry to move in this direction. And I believe that to be I believe that to be the case. Now, whether or not my expectations or my belief in that thesis uh, would suggest that they're going to be there next month or, or six months down the line is it is up to me to draw on where I would put the goalposts in starting along this line of integration of EV to the class A space. But when we are talking about a company here that is three years into its inception, I find it very ironic that the rhetoric and the scuttlebutt now in social media is dominated by negative sentiment. Negative sentiment. It's negative. The CEO should step down. I think exacerbated potentially by what was uh, viewed as a very negative quarter for the company Q2. I sit back and I look at the Q2 expectations and I think it was a gimme quarter. In other words, Hylion is progressing toward an end. Now, whatever progress toward that end could be shared on, let's say, a Q2 
call to shareholders, great and plenty. But my expectations were extremely muted going into this quarter call. And, and again, you, you know, the, the bulls and the bears, those who are hypercritical of my message would, again, suggest that I'm glazing over a shitty quarter. Um, so be it if you think that it was a poor quarter or so be it if you think that they should have shared more progress. Uh, so be it if you thought that they should have uh, shared X, Y, and Z and that you were disappointed that they didn't share X, Y, and Z. At the end of the day, Hylion chose not to share those details, and it's their prerogative to do so. It is your choice to either do or not to do in way of investing in the company. Choose not to invest? You can go find something else in your life to either find success in or fail at. Okay? And it brings me to my perspective about this company. People are not happy unless they are either go or no go, go or no go, go or no go with Hylion Holdings, go or no go. We get a little piece of news, we get a little momentum in the stock. We are a go to the, to the company. We're a go, Hylion. We're all go to the moon. The next price target is $5 and then 10 and, and, and then so on. We're a go. We're green to go. We get a little retraction in the price. Uh, we go through weeks and 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 months. Do I think they've been as transparent as I would like them to be? No, no, they haven't. But that's what they've chosen to do. Okay. Does it mean that the company is a bad company because they're not providing uh, critical optics? What every three days? I mean, you name the frequency, guys. Okay, name the frequency. Uh, by which you would expect this company to release information on. I have stopped tweeting. Um, it, it, it it irritates people more often than not. Um, Hylion has chosen uh, to, to go into kind of a lean period right now based on whatever calculations that they have to do so. And I've always contended that 2023 was going to be a, a bridging year. But when we lose track of this being at its core an investment in stock my feeling day to day now is numb uh, it's conditioned on owning this company it feels as if this company will never go up um, and i'm willing to write it to bankruptcy because there are certain people out there that would suggest that bankruptcy is a foregone conclusion. The bears on the company would agree, go Ryan, you're the man. Yeah, I, I, perhaps it goes bankrupt and then the world is a better place because we don't have the Hylion solution or the Hylion solution was destined for greatness and it was mismanaged on its way to commercialization. I don't know. That, that's a very realistic expectation and I won't be surprised to see this company fold up shop um, take down their revamped website, um, recall every Hypertruck ERX that they've ever put into fleet service, sever any tie that they've ever made with any of their hybrid customers that is kind of a sleeping bear as far as I'm concerned with uh, who they've done business with, uh, how happy they are with those products and their relationships with their customers, which if I was going to just give you a synopsis over the last three years, has been nothing more than nothing less than positive. I, I've never uh, heard a negative about the product over the last three years. And I'm again, I'm not trying to be um, I'm not to be jaded in my sharing of my opinion. I, that's just what I glean from the information that is available on this young company that's been around for three years is that they have made uh, some penetration as small as it might be, but that is marked progress toward an end that we are not at yet, my friends. We are not at that end. Um, the NHTSA cert self-certification has was completed as declared by Thomas Healy, the CEO. There are two pending CARB and uh, EPA certifications that are on the horizon that are critical milestones. They are the next checkbox in the road toward commercialization. 
And until we get those certifications, dare I would remind you that there is no product to sell. So where they were able to turn in 244K on the uh, quarterly top end revenues, we are still left with a $10 million redoubling down and readdressal for the year's end 2023. I'll leave that revenue projection alone for just a moment. Do I think they'll do 10? I don't know, based on Hylian's track record to forecast what they're going to make and what they're not going to make. I, I don't know why it's so difficult, but I also want the same token, don't truly understand why people are looking to value value this company right now um, against their current cash position. Uh, there was a few tweets that came through uh, on it being valued less than cash. Uh, I agree with the bear camp that it is absolutely fair, fairly valued right now where it is. A company does not sport a valuation based on a cash position that is constantly being deteriorated by cash burn. It's just that simple. Um, Hylian, Hylian is on a trajectory irrespective of its potential uh, to continue to erode its share price uh, until they can figure out a way to right the ship. Is $10 million going to move the needle? No. Um, is a slowed cash burn uh, trajectory going to slow the needle? No. Uh, John Panzer talked about the slow cash burn going forward and at least an acknowledgement of trying to slow the cash burn. I never thought I would say that because in respect to the total addressable market and the um, opportunity with this company, um, I never would have thought that the 130 million of cash burn per year would have been a problem because for a company that's looking to sport, you know, mid cap or did sport mid cap valuations, um, and and potentially be an industrial player. I look at Hylion if their opportunity does play out on the bullish thesis uh, to settle out at about ten to fifteen billion in its valuation. Um, there's a long way to go to there, and and with the company currently valued where it is at what three hundred and thirty million something like that, um, three hundred million, which is just a little bit less than the cash that was declared uh, on the books this quarter. There's a long, long way to go, and Hylion has done a pretty awesome job of driving down current sentiment based on market conditions. Naria, did I suggest that it's Hylion's fault? It's just that's how things have played out as a company. I know if you would ask any of the upper management or ask Thomas Healy or, or any of the upper management team, hey, would you rather have a higher stock price now? All of them would say, absolutely. We're all working diligently to, to achieve that end. But at, at the same token, <clears throat> I look at this company and I don't believe that they've earned it. What does that mean for future projections? I want to run you guys through an exercise, and I think this will be fun to do. In separating what it is that you understand about stock and entry prices and cost basis, um, I, I want you to imagine this company at $20 a share, okay? $20 a share down to its SPAC offering of $10 will be the two milestones that we will use as well as the floor of zero. Um, this company, to the best of my knowledge, is not going to go below zero. In other words, Hylion is not going to be sending us a bill to start paying to own the shares in the company, right? Um, we are still on the right side of zero, and I would contend that we will remain on the right side of zero as we bounce along the floor. Um, you know, I cover companies as low as one cent. Last quarter, that company that is trading currently right now on OTC markets trades for one cent. Um, they made 14 million last quarter. 14 million. The company is has a market cap of two and a half million. And it's been around since 1997. It's been reincorporated within the last three years, but the company's been around for over 20 years. Okay. Um not to suggest that Hylion will follow uh, along that same path of demise, but I do want to define that that floor at zero, there's a long way to go to get to that floor. 
between the current stock price of $1.30 and zero. Long way to go. Lots of divisions of zero, um, lots of thresholds. The dollar threshold will be a sentimental or a you know kind of a monumental threshold to break. Um, and then the floor below that, again, Hylion seems perfectly willing uh, to exercise the demons with regard to testing uh, new floors uh, every week with the stock. And they don't seem concerned about it. Um, a lot of people would say that there was a, a sentiment sense from Thomas Healy uh, that there's uh, somehow uh, uh, fires at Hylion. I, I didn't get that sense at all. I just think he calmly talked about um, current market conditions and 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 there's really nothing to be satisfied with. Um, the company has to continue to trudge on and do what they need to do. But the $20 stock price, $10 stock price, and the floor of zero, okay? I want you to imagine a red line going down on the stock chart for Hylion from 20 to $1.30. And I think we can all agree that that trajectory has been for the most part, on a downward trajectory. If you look at the chart, it looks like a, a slide at a playground, a red slide at that. So from 20 to $1.30, we can all agree that it's been on somewhat of a downward trajectory. Okay. Now, I will mention that over the previous few months, uh, it's been kind of a kick in the nuts to see the last month accelerated downtrend in the stock. Um, but we have yet to test the dollar twenty five all time low that was put in uh, some many months ago, and I didn't think we would retest that again. If we do, I would suggest the company will exacerbate selling lower uh, because I think there's a lot of people out there that are just fed up with the company altogether. They watch the quarter and they want to do something, and that something is to sell the stock. I think after I run you through this deliberation, you're going to understand a little bit more about how my mind works when it comes to entry price of stock. Entry price of stock. What does that mean, Ryan? 1812, uh, 1572, um, 1340, um, 10.11, um, 9.62, 6.78. These are all dollar amounts, Okay. And on this trajectory and this line of downward trending highly on stock, each buy point is a point on that line, okay? Now, a lot of people have a problem with using a little bit of imagination in understanding what that share base or that um, uh, lowering of the entry point actually means, okay? With each lower buy point, that point above actually lowers that cost basis. But for the sake of example, we're going to leave the 1782. We're going to leave all of those points right on that line. Okay. For me, I've got about 25 buy points along that trajectory buying all the way down. Okay. None of those buy points based on what I can tell. There was a few that started to eke into the green, which is what we all want. And what I mean by that, to share my insights, is if we put dots on each one of those buy points as we go down at the price that we paid, irrespective of the amount of shares that we bought at that specific buy point, and we take and we draw a red line across that chart. Charts always start, I guess, from my perspective, you can kind of see that I'm working opposite. If you're looking at a chart left to right, we can see that downtrending line there uh, that is red and that each one of your buy points, each one of us are going to have different buy points on the way down. If you draw a parallel line across each one of those buy points, each one of those buy points, each one of those buy points, for me, there's 25 lines total. For some of you guys, there's two lines. For some of you guys who bought the stock at $58, there's one line. Okay. And your cost basis is $58. And what I'm going to explain to you is even in that extreme case, that red line, as faded as it is, and the amount of fading of that red line becomes as extreme the further it moves away from that red line. Okay. Now, for example, my top buy point at this point in the stock is just over $11 in the, in the, 
because that's where I started to accumulate the shares again. So my 25 buy points start from $11 across. Once it got below the SPAC price, I thought, look, okay, the initial value of the company at, at $10 was probably a good entry below the stock. Now that's proven to be wrong. And it just means I'm a shitty investor, right? No problem. What I'm explaining to you is those parallel lines drawn across there represent my holdings as a block, okay? Now you look at the total accumulated number of shares based on that cost basis that you've entered the company with. And the top line is going to be the most faded. The next line is going to be a little bit more pronounced. The next line is gonna be a little more pronounced a little more pronounced, a little more pronounced as we get to that very bottom cost basis, which mine is around $1.32, okay? Now, based on where the stock ends today, that line that goes across there actually has a chance of going from a, a light red to full green. Because once you step into profitability, and once we start to step back up that ladder of buy points, each one of that, those lines or cost basis that you've initiated into the position start to turn bold green again, bold green, $1.32. It just happened to me as early as last month. And you think there's no way we just had a terrible quarter, Ryan, stay with me. Last quarter or last month, the shot, the stock shot up to around $2 and 28 cents, I think is where it went to. All right. We've had almost a dollar retraction in the stock. I have lots of buy points with a one in front of it, okay? So anything above two, I'm back in the green, okay? On those pre preliminary rungs of the ladder, okay? Now, as the stock continues to digress, which I have no reason to believe that it's going to do anything other than what it's proven to us that we can do, I'll talk about that in, in a moment. We'll watch the, the stock continue to go down and I will be strategically putting more rungs under the stock, thinking that the company is not going to go bankrupt, okay? I still have a bullish thesis of the company, but to establish those rungs and my buy points all average together to get my cost basis of entry into the stock, okay? I think where people fail to understand stock market investing is that they look at that buy point and they look at the losses, they look at the next buy point and they look at the losses and they don't look at it cumulatively. Okay. When a lot of people are saying, Hey, lower your cost basis. It sometimes falls on deaf ears when new investors look at it and they're like, man, I'm down X number of percent in the stock. And, and that's what they key it key in on. My friends, if your expectation is to buy this company at the dead soup nuts low, it's not going to happen for you, okay? Um, my cost basis currently in the company is around $6.30 in the company. I'm totally willing with holding my shares here mid-August after uh, what is perceived to be a nail in the coffin quarter. I, I don't look at it that way, but I'm absolutely happy with my share base as I own it cumulatively, because again, if I go back to the charts, I see a bunch of lines, which represent my stock purchases from my cost basis over, excuse me, from my buy point over, buy point over, buy point over. And as time goes along, those red lines fade to magenta, the further away they get at the lower the stock price goes. As the stock price goes up, that red line starts to increase to full red until it can turn to full green when that buy point is met and surpassed, okay? Now, I digress. When I talk about my share base in Hylion, I, I wanna bring this full circle in truly understanding for a lot of retail investors who are just downright pissed off right now that they own a stock that has gone down. <laughs> Um, your life is probably not as bad as you think that it is. Um, you're holding in highly on, um, and the negative sentiment that you have over that whole holding is probably more mental than physical, uh, unless you allow it to be. Let me give you some insights as far as I'm concerned. Um, 
My exercise regime has actually ramped up since I've owned the company because I felt like I needed to implement a little bit of um, balance. Um, the diet has improved. Um, my rigor at work has improved. All the while, I have just been, put quite frankly, a share owner in this company, a share owner, okay? I think a lot of you guys may potentially, and for, for those of you who do not, I don't mean to, to judge, but I think a lot of you guys make this thing out to be more than what it is. <laughs> I really do. Um, I, I see certain posts on Twitter. Um, I see comments in the Facebook group, Bullish Shareholder Facebook group. And they disappoint me because institutions aren't making those uh, brash demands of, of a company right now that is <clears throat> premature from uh, acknowledging, uh, let alone doing some of the things that the retail community are demanding over the company. Um, now, somebody could come over the top and say, Ryan, you're just plain wrong. Um, it is absolutely time for the CEO, Thomas Healy, to step down. In my heart of hearts, my friends, I am telling you, that is that is absolutely not what this company needs right now. Um, I, I think Thomas Healy, over the last three years, has done a fantastic job of, of, of leading this company. And I think a lot of the criticism that he gets about not being charismatic enough or not being CEO-ish enough or too mechanically inclined to run this company is somewhat laughable and you should stop. You should stop with the criticisms. I left in the Facebook group that it is different to be disappointed in the performance of a, of a company. Um, tracking back three years since coming to public markets it is okay to be disappointed in a bad quarter or a sequence of bad quarters, but it is different to be disappointed in a company as opposed to asking a CEO to step down. Those are two completely different worlds, my friends. The reasons why I would suggest that a CEO needs to step down is um, poor management, um, as it speaks to the company and their inability to move their product forward. My friends, I'm going to tell you my best insight is that Hylion has moved forward. Um, slower than most people, myself included, would have liked to have seen. But as far as mismanagement in way of putting people in place to do malicious things, cook the books, um, say things that are untrue for the sake of misguiding the company, I get it with the initial projections, but in all honesty, I don't know what went into those projections. I don't know if Thomas Healy sat down. This is what he's being accused of. And I'm disappointed in the projections as well, but the accusation is such that let's sit down and drop an investor presentation that misleads. I don't know if that's the case. It could very well be the case that they knew full well which is my contention that they could not meet CARB, NHTSA, EPA certification, or hell, maybe they didn't even know that they needed to, which is embarrassing in and of itself. But did the, did the initial investor presentation, was it drawn up with the intent to deceive? I will give highly on the benefit of the doubt until proven different, okay? Um, if there's financial um, insolvency in way of, again, cooking the books, um, not making sound financial decisions, uh, diluting shareholders at the time when it's probably not the time to dilute, um, which 2023 is not the time to dilute shareholders right now. The stock's trading at $1.30. The value back to Hylion is what? It's going to give them $50 million. Um, That's a half a year's CapEx and OpEx. Combined, that's pretty poor. That's less than a, a a year of just continuing to throw money in the vacuum. Um, we are not that we are not at that impasse. Nicola has passed that impasse twice. As a share owner, that's a huge red flag for me. Now, as a share owner, if Hylion does go with either a financing or a capital raise through the issuance and sale of shares, is that going to be a reason for me to sell the stock? No, it won't. It will just be an acknowledgement of what is potentially necessary when those uh, decisions are made down the line. And as disappointing as it may be, 
uh, to have to raise capital in an emergency situation, I would love to seek uh, highly on seek out a little bit more financial strength, uh, and then um, and then borrow or sell shares into strength, right? Which I think would be a bullish catalyst for the company to raise as much money as they possibly need to not only get commercialization here in the states. Uh, solidified, but also begin on their commercial uh, commercialization abroad, which I think there's immense opportunity abroad for a lot of the other countries out there that I think are probably a lot more receptive than the United States. Um, there's a lot of trucking tweets that I see. I'm a one a, one truck owner, and I'll never drive an electric truck. <laughs> okay. No problem. I guess that means that the entire industry, as you speak for it, is not going to be changing to an electrified powertrain solution, nor finding a place for a BEV application into the future. Um, there was a story that I read about a gentleman who bought the new uh, all-electric Ford truck. I didn't even know this existed, but the way the story reads is that paid $100,000 for this EV truck and wanted to take a trip across the country. Unfortunately, got caught 13 miles uh, before a charging station. Long story short, the truck dies on him on the side of the road. He has to rent a gas truck to actually tow the EV truck to the EV charging station and then limped his way um, to the final destination to actually make the, uh, uh, to make the trip a whole. Why do I share that? I look at the Tesla opportunity. Me, for one, I'm jaded because I don't like the cars and I really don't like full EV. Um, I think it's creating more of a problem at the back end. I think they benefit from a politically uh, positive a politically positive agenda now. In other words, I don't think they're dealing with the cross currents that Hylian is dealing with because they're not zero emissions profile yet. Much more. Uh, practical as far as their solution, but practicality only goes so far when you're working against um, a politically correct um, initiative to go all BV at the ex at the expense of 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 who knows what, right? Um, uh, you know, a, a non-existent grid, um, a high cost of electricity, a demand on the electric grid that is not feasible in nature, but it's politically correct, right? So. People fall all over themselves, and I'm seeing all kinds of reports about people having buyer's remorse about buying something as simple as Tesla, the number one EV manufacturer and sales uh, 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 market share uh, dominator in the EV space is Tesla. So they're number one. Does it generate hype enough to where people may feel compelled to buy the EV, even though Potentially, there might be attributes that are looked at, acknowledged, and, and then just gleaned over to make that purchase because, hey, everybody else is talking about how awesome it is to own a Tesla. I think Hylion is suffering a little bit from that. I do. I think the current prove it story with Hylion is yet to be proven out. Um, I think the CARB and the EPA certification that is supposed to be finalized uh, in at the end of Q3, which has been declared to us. Um, we are in Q3 now. Um, and it, so over the coming months, we should expect some color on the certification of the units. And I think that's going to be a, a wonderful catalyst. Will it move the stock? Hell no. <laughs> we know it's not going to move the stock. But as far as a share owner in the company, I want some assurance to understand that the product that I support and am invested in can achieve that final certification. And I think if I was going to lend my insights to what that could potentially mean, we go from a non-viable product to a viable product. In other words, Hylion will have the neon green light to introduce uh, the uh, Hypertruck ERX in controlled fleet trials to the fleets of their choice. I think that's going to be wonderful. Set this thing in motion. The Hylion story cannot be told unless the product has ample opportunity to be put into the rigor of class eight. We can't do that, my friends, until those final two certifications are met. Once those certifications are met, we can put that in our proverbial rear view mirror. And we can move on and focus on the goings on with the controlled fleet trials. 
I want to revert back to the Q2 call a little bit. And just like in highly on fashion, um, I think people have an interesting way of reading through the call, at least the last couple, which have been pretty crappy quarters, both of them. Q1 and Q2 were crappy. Um, I have no reason to believe that in true Hylion fashion, Hylion's not going to just end 2023 with a complete dud uh, in Q3 at least. Uh, Q4 promises to be a little bit more exciting because until we get the certification, my friends, we are in a waiting game and the stock is going to do whatever the stock is going to do, whether it digresses to 50 cents, whether it digresses to one cent, I, I don't know. Um, 75 cents, whether or not it shoots back up to $2 and 25 cents, right? It's just, it's, it, it's one of those things to where we need to have fair expectations. And I think people want to just jump right on the bandwagon when it comes to, when it comes to looking at the optics of a quarter and, and 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 just jumping on this, it was a terrible quarter, and therefore we need to fire the CEO, and I need to justify every reason to sell the stock. Um, I digress a little bit, and I look at it, and I just say it was as expected. Um, it is a quarter. It, it's not the end-all, be-all for the company. Um, the company could do absolutely nothing, and it will take a while to burn $330 million of cash and cash equivalents with no debt on the books, I might add. Um, before it fails, right? The Q2 call has nothing to do with that, <laughs> nothing. So you can take it with a grain of salt or you can pull your hair out or you can get all stressed out about it and you can get all fired up about it. I read the call. I wasn't moved one way or the other. It was just like, yeah, okay, nothing exciting there. I moved on with my day. And the proverbial backlash that we've had after the Q2 call was kind of unacceptable, to be honest with you. And I charge you guys with coming to the realization to do or not to do when it comes to owning the stock. Okay. You're either going to be a share owner or not. Okay. If you're looking for an excuse to exit the position, you'll exit the position eventually. You might as well do it now. Okay. Um, I just told you I'm willing to take the stock into bankruptcy. Again, I'm playing into y'all's words. Uh, I don't see that happening. I, there's too much progress with this company, with the employees that have been built up, the um, company warehouse, the relationships that has been built up with multiple customers thus far. And we're two shakes away from solidifying a product here that has a real chance of being put in on a controlled basis and getting some real positive results back. Will that be a windfall for the company? Will that be a windfall for the product? And moreover, would will that be that final justification perhaps that has been lacking uh, in the grander stock market to drive the stock uh, down, uh, basically valuing the company's initiatives at zero? If, if the company is based less than zero, then what is the uh, market cap that you award for the patents, um, the product, the initiative, uh, and, the, and the future perspective for uh, revenues to be generated? What is the value you put on the company? Right now, $25 million? $50 million? Mind you, this is in the face of a company that's got $330 million, right? And people keep focusing on the value being less than cash. And providing no value whatsoever to where the company has been, where it is, and more importantly, where it's going. I hope you guys appreciated this update perspective. I think we need to wait and see. Uh, we will eventually be coming across milestones in Q3, Q4. Hopefully, the exercise that I walked you through helps you understand that your share accumulation in Hylion is more a collective, uh, a collective base. If you want to put a number to it, certainly look at the cost basis. Mine is around $6.93, something like that. In some of the other accounts, it might be closer to $9, closer to $10, whatever that might be. Um, but that's what you live with. 
right? You don't look at the day-to-day down five, six days in a row, down 17% for a month or whatever. You don't look at that. You just look at it as, look, the company is looking to find its space right now. And we are actively in that. And I'm looking to Marshall and Shepard, anybody who's interested in the potential of the speculative investment to follow along the journey with me. Um, Whether or not it ends up bankrupt, no problem. We'll move on to the next opportunity. Uh, If not, and the thing ends up turning north, I'll be the same, Ryan, no matter what. The secret to this whole sauce is, and if you haven't uh, identified this or have lost track of the fact that you are also you, no matter if you own this stock down or up or sideways, um, you are still you. And to keep this thing in context, because business is business, and more importantly, with speculative investing, perspective is perspective. And I think this company needs more time, either hold or don't hold the stock. Keep it simple, keep your eyes on the prize and stay positive as we move forward. But that's my take on the Q2 call. A little less negative than I think maybe you were expecting and maybe a a, a a little less positive than you were expecting. And I revert back to what I gave you uh, before the call in what I expected to be neutral to negative. And that's exactly what the call was. Uh, Look to the horizon for better times. I think we're going to look back on these collective months and years um, from a lens of a company that needed ample time to start and get their product, which is not there yet, in the hands of a class eight uh, space that actually needs this solution. Guys, if you appreciate the message, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments at the bottom, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified of future videos that I upload to YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in for the totality of this highly on reaction to Q2 earnings. Guys, we'll catch you in the next one and good luck in your investment future. 